Well, to further discuss the ongoing conflict, we're joined live now by diplomatic analyst Idan Ronan. Idan, thanks a lot for joining us on the program. Uh, the first question I have for you is uh, basically, well, obviously neither side seems willing to put an end to what the UN Secretary General has now called a spiraling escalation. What do you think Israel should do next? Just before, just before what should Israel do next, I just have to correct you for the previous report you have mentioned. You have mentioned the Palestinians were evicted from Sheikh Jarrah. This is a misleading report. What was the reality was the, the settlements won a legal lawsuit that the same uh, legal lawsuits in the Supreme Court, that is the, that is the same Israeli Supreme Court that the Palestinians use uh, to, to launch their file, to, to file their lawsuits in uh, um, random other cases. But in that case, those settlers had the rights and the proper real estate rights. Now, in any chance, these are only real estate conflicts. They happen every time and then. What there was some reality which was preceding that some two weeks ago, let me some of you please uh, in full frame mode, I want you please to take a very close good look at that. Palestinians, just like that, for the fun and leisure, they just keep slapping Jews. That is here in the metro in Jerusalem, and that is here uh, where in Jaffa, that is Israel proper. That is just south of Tel Aviv. They hit uh, an old rabbi. This is just unbelievable, just like 7th century throwbacks. And I'm sorry, and I do say 7th century throwbacks, because those sort of throwbacks are the ones who always keep saying that they don't care for life. All they care is death. Check out this Palestinian mother, how she basically she encourages every Palestinian mother to sacrifice her, her children. I can okay, you done. Okay, those, those, are, those are some convincing pictures there, but I mean, we can go back. Uh, can you seriously say that Israel gives uh, a justifiable force back to what uh, Hamas yeah. is doing in Palestine? Because we could go back to 2014 Operation Protective Edge, in which over 2,000 Palestinians were killed, and not even 100 Israelis had lost their lives. Oh, so you're taking me into the disproportionate thing. Well, let me, take, well, let me tell you something about the disproportionality thing. This whole disproportionality here is downright anti-Semitism, and I, let me please stress this one thing. I never, ever pick the anti-Semite card just like that. I will use this platform of saying out loud, any Israeli or Jew or pro-Israeli who just picks up the anti-Semite card, I consider him as a coward. I think it is more anti-Israel rather than anti-Semite, but saying that, when you are say, when you're using the disproportionality card, uh, anti-Semitism in plain modern terms pretty much is defined as Jew-only standards. I challenge you, sir, I challenge this, anybody. This doesn't have to do with anti-Semitism. This has to do with, with one disproportionate one force. Conflict where, the, where the term disproportionality is picked up and thrown up to the open air just like that. And besides, even in real life, even if there's a if there's a burglar who robs the bank, would you say would you imagine only a single police car chasing him? What do you mean this proportionality here? What do you thought like? Uh, it's uh, not about a single police car. It's about him and his entire family being killed. Do you think that that would be fair for a bank robber, or or would it be fair excuse to me, to adhere to the, the proper uh, the proper me, laws please. that are in place? Excuse me, sir. Winston Churchill have wiped out 30,000, 40,000 innocent Dresdeners. Men, women, and children there. They had nothing to do with uh, the Nazi soldiers. Would you consider Winston Churchill as a war criminal? Okay, well, we can move on to uh, a different uh, sphere right now. I wanted to talk a little okay. bit about what you said about the legality of the, uh, of the evictions in East Jerusalem and the legality of settlements in Israel, because I can cite you right here. Of course, uh, what you're saying is true about the Israeli courts, but according to the United Nations Security Council Resolution 2334, um, settlements are, quote, a vagrant violation of international law and have no legal validity. So do you think that Israel has the right to evict people under the auspices of something that the international community has ruled illegal? Okay, then let's split up the issues here. As for the United Nations, that is the same United Nations which have appointed Syria and Libya and Yemen representatives to chair the human rights councils. So with all due respect, I'm not sure that using the United Nations uh, terminology would make any more respect for those who claim those. I'm sorry to tell you this, but if only the world would be held into what the United Nations, uh, would, the United Nations would decide, which is a totally biased organization, it is absolutely 100% politicized, then I think uh, it's basically, uh, it is just disrespect. I'm, I'm purely saying that. I don't even have to be Israeli to mention that. 
Um, okay, done. But and, and about and yeah. for your question, hang on. As for the other question you're saying, um, you're talking to me about the legality of what Israel has done. Well, <laughs> exp- uh, um, if I only consider your question correct, I thought I think you're talking about the what, uh, what was taken in the Sheikh Jarrah neighborhood. I absolutely believe so, as I just told you that in the outset. Why? Because that is the same Israeli Supreme Court that the same East Jerusalem Palestinians often used to go there and file their lawsuits. So what are we having here? Whenever they, whenever they lose in their lawsuits, they start to riot like, 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 uh, like violent throwbacks and disrespect, uh, like sore losers who cannot respect and accept decisions. Uh, uh, made out by the same Supreme Court day every Monday and th- every time and then they go to, then in that case, I think, sir, yes. This Supreme okay, Court Okay, Don, sorry, we, we, no we just don't have any more time. I would, I would give you more time, but we heard your point of view, and uh, thank you very much for coming on the program. Everyone, Edon Ronin, diplomatic analyst, thanks for joining us. Okay.